All right, I've got a discount for you. We're talking Xbox Live. Loads of gaming discounts. All you have to do is go to my description, copy my code from the description, paste my code. Woof, it's gaming time. Righto, tell you there, champs. Now you've just got a new laptop, whether it's a gift or you bought one on one of the sales or something like that. Let's find out what to look for. It doesn't matter. Mac or PC, it doesn't matter. It's the same sort of procedure all the time. And we're going to do all the checks so you know that you've got a good unit. Now, first of all, you want to do the like low hanging fruit check. I'll get to those in a sec. And the reason why you want to do those first is because these are instant returns. If these things are bad, there's something wrong with them, it goes back straight away. So first of all, if you've got an XPS 15, you know how tough it is. Do that with any other laptop, it'll break. No, no. First thing is physical check, right? Physical check. You've got to check. Is the trackpad seated properly? Is it even the whole way around? Do the keys work? You want to check, you know, the hinges, you know, give it a nice tweak here and there. You want to check that all the panels line up. You want to check, you know, the screws are tight. All the panels line up. The tolerances are all good. You want to check if the lid and the base are sort of in alignment there. There's no, you know, big step or big gap there. Check everything physically. All right, so that's what you've got to do. So once you're in, first thing we want to do is check the screen, right? Just go to LCD to tech, pixel check, and then just start the test. Then just put the screen to the maximum brightness and do all the tests. So you just press the space bar to go through all the colors and you want this at full brightness. You want to charge it first as well. Make sure you put the laptop on the charger and put full brightness and check for dead pixels. Dead pixels aren't really a thing now, but you know, just check it anyway. Escape that, you wanna to go to YouTube. Now, the best way I think to check for this sort of stuff is just to get some content that fills the screen, it's dark, and you turn up the brightness, and you just look for light bleed. Now, of course, you can do that pixel test, and then just turn everything to full brightness, but this is not realistic, right? So you go to that dark screen, you can see this has stuff all light bleed, a tiny little bit, nothing really to worry about. But you know, you wanna watch some content in the dark, and you know, just putting a black screen is not sort of realistic. Every single LCD panel has like light bleed, all right? LED, they all have light bleed. It's just a matter of how much light bleed do they have. My sort of rule of thumb is, if you watch a dark movie in a dark room, does it disturb you, the light bleed? That's where I sort of draw the line. If I can see it while I'm watching dark content in a dark room, it goes back. I don't put black screens on because every panel has light bleed. OLED panels don't really have light bleed, so don't really check OLED for that. Then also what you want to do is go into a quiet room and listen for coil wine. So you'll know when you hear coil wine, it'll be like some sort of electrical noise. If you can hear that and it's disturbing, that might be cause for a turn. Then you want to check all the ports, the keyboard, everything. So you want to check the trackpad. You want to make sure it works properly and the keys, check all the keys, make sure every key works, check all the ports. And this is one thing I've been caught on before, like not checking all the ports to see if they work in that. Make sure you plug your headphones in, etc. Make sure everything works. And there actually is a trackpad game. I'll leave a link in the description where you can check out, you know, how good the trackpad's tracking, but make sure it's all seated, make sure all the keys work. Then you wanna play the speakers and make sure at full volume, they're not like rattling or anything like that. Now, some speakers will distort a little bit at full volume. This is normal, but if it's at 90%, 80%, it should not be distorted and they shouldn't rattle, it should sound okay. I would suggest before you do all those checks, make sure you update the BIOS. With this Dell here, it's gonna be different with every manufacturer. Uh, you just go to Dell update, and it will update all the drivers, it will update the BIOS and everything. Now, I think Lenovo have the same sort of thing. You're gonna to have to do this by manufacturer, which one it is, with Apple, do the updates. I can't tell you how to do it for every single laptop, but yes, make sure everything is up to date, the BIOS, everything. So once all that's sort of passed, once you've done all those physical checks and stuff, now it's pretty much, Good to go. Now we need to check the performance, the thermals, and for other issues. Right on. now we're inside the beast. So let's see what we have to check for inside. I will say, I forgot to mention, you wanna check the frame and the seating of the display, like the bezel, make sure it's seated in there properly. Now we wanna check, did we get the right PC? So we wanna check the specs. So all we do is right click on the Windows button there, 
and we go to system and it should tell you your system here and it says i've got 16 gigs ram i've got an i7 9750h yes that's right also you just press Control alt delete and just go to performance make sure that you know the gpu's there you'll see gpu if you have a gpu you should see two gpus this is the 1650 and the intel hd of course also, you just go to my computer, which is, you know, whatever, my PC, and you check your SSD or hard drive size. Now, of course, when you're talking GPU here, Ultrabooks will only usually have one GPU. They're not going to have a separate GPU. And now we just want to update all the drivers. So with this Dell, as I've mentioned before, all I do is type in Dell, and then Dell update will come up, and then I'll follow the prompts. That will even update date BIOS and stuff like that sometimes you have to go to manufacturer site this will be different for every sort of manufacturer so you know you want to check that also if you just type in update in the search thing it'll come up check for updates and you want to go there and do all the windows updates you want to check the updates just make sure everything's up to date most importantly the BIOS okay so check your manufacturer's website for the BIOS because that can make a huge difference now we want to check the battery now this is the battery report and i'll show you how you get the battery report in a sec and as you can see here we have 97 watt hour battery but i'm only getting 87 watt hours now check it when you first get the laptop this should increase right because i've just refreshed this i've just formatted it i guarantee i'll go through a few battery cycles and that will go up now you want to be within 10%. You can see there, I'm sort of in 10% now. So any extra capacity I get now will be a bonus. Batteries can vary within 10%. It can give you more battery charge or it can give you less. And as you can see, that's the design capacity, 97 watt. And then this is the actual real capacity of the battery. That will increase when I cycle the charges. You can calibrate, but that's another video. I'll show you how to get that. You just got to paste this bit of code. So you just right click on the Windows thing here and you just go to PowerShell or you can use CMD uh, command prompt and you just paste this bit of code here, Control V. I'll leave this code which you just copy and paste into PowerShell or command prompt and that will just yeah press return or enter make sure you run it in administrator mode both the command prompt or you know PowerShell and then you'll get a battery report in the C drive you know you just go in there C drive and of course you can change where it saves or whatever by changing you know the bit of code I just pasted for you in the description so then you open up that and that will give you a battery report that'll improve over time don't worry about it until you've done at least five cycles once you get the five cycles if it's less than 10 percent of the original capacity then you might want to return it also keep listening for coil wine now when it comes to graphics drivers if you've got nvidia graphics you want to install geforce and you install this and then you update the drivers using geforce experience if you have amd download them from AMD site you can also download from Nvidia site if you want as well but it's easier to do it sometimes it won't install with GeForce experience it will always install if it's not installing you'll have to go to your manufacturer's website and get the um, you know the driver from them but it should install with GeForce experience AMD go to their website and of course if you have an ultrabook you're not going to have discrete graphics all right so now we want to test the thermals and we'll get to gaming sort of thing in a sec but thermals we're going to test all we're looking for is this not to go below base so if you have a look here at this frequency here it should not go below that line so if you can see the little mouse cursor there do not go below this line now this is going to be for every sort of laptop you get you have to install this you know intel power gadget and cinebench and we run that five times and we just want to make sure that this does not go below the line here all right so you can see it peaking up peaked up to 2.9 it's going 2.8 or whatever don't judge this on how hot it is now because i have not got the air conditioning on and you know here in australia the air quality is bad i do not want to bring outside air into this house it's hot af in here the bushfires like it's absolutely nuts um but yeah you can see here this is going to end up Doing, it's actually doing less than 43 watts but it's above base right it's 100 percent cpu and it's above base run this you know four or five times and as long as that frequency stays above that base line there you're good to go right you're good to go thermally it's okay now we'll talk about gpu in a sec 
Now, undervolting it, getting more performance out of it is another story. I've already made videos on how to do that. Now, with that test, don't worry about CPU temperature because some CPUs will run to 100 degrees. Some won't let them. Some manufacturers don't like it. They'll, you know, limit it to 80 or 90 degrees. It's just going to depend on your manufacturers. I mean, Dell and Apple, they don't care. They'll let it run to 100. So don't worry about the temperature. What you want to do is check out my channel, check out Jared's channel, own it his own. Bob of all trades, you know, AMD tech, stuff like that for thermals for specific models. You should be able to find a YouTube video for this. And if you do all Mac stuff, check out the Tudio's channel as well. And I think that's about it. If you have a gaming laptop, and I'm specify here, gaming laptop, you want to play something like Battlefield 5, again, check out those channels I've mentioned before, my channel and other channels, you know, to specifically see how your, you know, laptop should perform. If it is a gaming laptop, but just the rule of thumb, if it's a gaming laptop and it's not stuttering and micro stuttering and, you know, jerking around, well, it's fit for purpose. If it starts like, you know, power limit throttling and thermal throttling, and you'll know it'll start jerking and, you know, lagging and stuttering and stuff like that, then it's not fit for purpose, in my opinion, as a gaming laptop. If you've got a laptop that's not a gaming laptop, like an Ultrabook, don't expect, <laughs> you know, games to even run on an Ultrabook unless it's a really low end game. And say, for example, MacBook Pro or XPS 15, don't expect that not to stutter or power limit throttle or something like that. That may have some sort of jerking reaction. Battlefield 5 is the best game I have found to test because if it suffice Battlefield 5, it usually is okay. And again, you know, MacBook Pro, XPS 15, they will eventually power limit throttle or thermal throttle here and there because they're not made for gaming. Gaming laptop, not acceptable. You know, sort of creator laptops, it is sort of acceptable. But of course, you have to check out your specific model, check out videos on thermals and stuff like that to know how it should perform. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.